So when I was a young person, back in the old days of the Vancouver Aquarium, they had a reptile room and they had a big, ugly, toothy, long green lizard, a crocodile. And the crocodile was just there still. So all the people were hucking pennies at it, trying to get the crocodile to move. And he was unnervingly stoic. And I looked at the crocodile and I realized what he was doing. He was memorizing their faces. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometime later, years ago, I'm in a little town in Mexico I stay in, and I get an opportunity to see crocodiles in the wild. It's some trepidation and some excitement. I'm with my girlfriend Jan, and these tourist women have invited us along. One of them has a car. It's going to be about an hour drive, so we start yakking in the car, and we talk about the, what we've heard about these crocodiles in this crocodile sanctuary. One of the stories is about this one crocodile that is enormous. So big that the locals have a nickname for him. His nickname is Amigo. And nobody is really sure how old this primordial creature is. So that's one story. The other story is kind of an urban myth. And everybody kind of has heard a little bit about it. And so we tell this story, and it basically goes like this. The Crocodile Sanctuary is a lagoon of crocodiles, and they're a freshwater lagoon. Crocodiles don't like anything but fresh water. But there's only a narrow strip of land before you get to the beach and the sea. So one year there's this hurricane, and the hurricane goes inland so far it goes into the freshwater lagoon and he drags the crocodiles out and some of them end up on a sandbar several meters from the shore. Well the storm finishes, the hurricane's over, the sun comes out, the tourists go out on the beach and they get in the water. What's that moving in the water? Dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> yes, that's right, the crocodiles are heading for the tourists. Everybody's running and screaming, just like the scene from John's. They're all running and screaming. They have to call the federales in to shoot rogue crocodiles heading for tourists. That's what the myth is. That's the story. And we all have heard it before. So we get into town. We're going to look for the lagoon. We go to the end of the town, and there I'm looking around, and there is, I can see the fresh water, I can see a lagoon, but there's just this chain link fence, but it's got huge gaps in it, and there's no signs, nothing, so so I go up to the place in the near the water with a gap in it, and I'm standing right at the water's edge trying to survey the lagoon, look at it, when I feel Jan's hand on my arm, she's like, there's a crocodile right below me, and we step away. <laughs> There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and there's several more. They're almost completely invisible when they're in the water. So I know how they've been around for a long time. And so we're like, well, why is there no, there's no fix to the fence, there's no clothes, it's, well, it's Mexico. So we follow the, the, the chain link fence a little further along, there's little tiny signs that say, Gen Gen uh, a danger, cocodrilla, trilo, cocodrilo, as crocodiles. And we get to this place where you can go across to the other part of the lagoon if you pay a few pesos. And there's some pens over there. And we can see over to the pens. And there's an enormous crocodile in one of the pens. I can see it. And I'm thinking, is that you, Amigo? The other women, they said, we've had enough crocodiles, thank you, we're heading to the beach. But me and Jan say, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to pay the pesos, we're going to go across the bridge. So as we go across the bridge, some other tourists join us. They're some young men from Australia. And they're like, oh yeah, we got crocs. We got crocs all the time, we know all about crocs. And they start telling us all about crocs, and they go on. And, and then pretty soon Jan and I are talking, yeah, crocs is, crocs is that. And I'm going, Just, isn't that a shoe craze? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we get over to the others, and then they keep on going, oh yeah, cox, cox. 
and there's only this one great big crocodile in the pen. So the pens have about a foot and a half of concrete and then this plastic coated chain link fence. So there's only one crocodile to look at. We all lean over the fence to look at. And suddenly the crocodile expands and lunges and makes this sound and we all jump back and scream like little girls. Even the Australians. <laughs> The crocodile had done the most enormous crocodile sigh. Well, the Australians are like, yeah, yeah, okay, I don't know. They go off and Dan are like, <laughs> nail me go. But I look at the crocodile and I'm going, is that you, amigo? And I know what he's thinking. I still got it. <laughs>